welcome back to the workshop for part three in the hand pump project this is where we've got to so far uh, parts one and two and today we're going to uh, do some work on this piston the primary objective is to put a slot in the end we'll have a, a, a slope on it the slot is 3 16 which is 4.76 millimeters wide so I've got a four mil four millimeter end mill and uh, there's a, a one eight, the the slot is one eighth of an inch deeper on on the right hand side than the left, so we'll put it at an angle I think in the in the sign vice and um, cut across there and clean it up and see how we go. So let's get set up. So we've set up a dial test indicator here and uh, made sure we're very square. No movement there at all on the dial. Perfect. Okay, so it works out over this 100 millimeters here. Um, to get the angle right, we need a 25 millimeter gauge block, which is very easy to do. Don't even need a stack for that. And we can lock it down. I didn't trust uh, this um, round the other way. I had it the other. I had it so that the V block was against the fixed jaw, and I, I ran an indicator across the top, and there was about a thousandth, a bit more uh, difference in the in the top there. And I'm pretty sure my little V block is a very precise one. So I flipped it round, and that was a good move. So that's now very uh, showing, showing very little change across there. So uh, I think that's a lot more closer to being square. So I'm glad I checked that. That was a good thing. So we've got the center finder there, the edge finder. So we want to know where we are vertically here, so we can get the depth of this slot right. Now I've zeroed my quill DRO here and if I put that down on the top there it says I'm 2.87 millimeters vertically so I come over to my touch DRO here and put 2.87 set dimension now, now, now I know that if I come down here to zero Right on zero there. So we can get our depth accurate. Okay, so now it's just a matter of... Check this with the taper gauge. One five eight. And we want this slot to be one eight eight, which is convenient. So one five eight is thirty. So we need to take fifteen. So we'll put our DRO into inches. Take ten off there. One six nine. Ten off the other side. Seven eight. Another five off each side. So that was that's working out. So we'll go fifteen.
we're looking for 188 what have we got One eight eight on the money. It's pretty good. One eight nine. What do we got here? Here, one eight nine. Okay, so we're a thou. We're a th we've got a thou clearance, so that's 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 why we did this part first. So that's okay. Here we're set up to drill a hole in the end to hold the uh, clevis pin. So I'm just checking the uh, the edges uh, and center drill, drill and ream. Here I am setting up the end cap for the piston. It's a piece of plastic, which I think is probably some kind of Delrin. This kit's pretty old, so who knows what it is. Um, anyway, I just have to turn it down to size, and, um, drill it out and countersink it, and then part it off to the right length. last operation on the piston is to drill out the end and tap it so that it can uh, accept the, the little screw that holds in the end cap that we just made. So here I am center drilling and then drilling it out and tapping it. I think it's 8BA. grind the groove for the o-ring I needed a little high speed st steel tool so I ground it up on the d-bit cutter and here I am setting it up now um, you can see that, that the actual tool is upside down which allows me to get the the uh, clearance angle on the side the, the holder only tilts one way so to do the other side I flip it over and, and do it right side up Now here we go, uh, cutting the groove, you'll see that I've got the gear, the, 
the lathe set up to run very slowly for this to make sure I don't get any chatter and I've got some Rokol uh, lubricant there just to keep everything uh, uh, cutting properly and I feed in very slowly to the very specific depth that I, I had to look up in the o-ring design uh, charts that you can find on the internet and uh, the width and the depth are prescribed for this the half inch o-ring size that I've got um, so taking it very slow and we've ended up with quite a nice uh, groove you can see that the the tool's cutting pretty well, not not fantastically well, but uh, at least there's no chatter. So that's the job done. We've got our groove in and we can take the part out of the chuck, have a, a last look at it and it looks pretty good. So here's the final assembly of what we've got. We've got the piston and the little o-ring. The original o-ring that came with the set was so old that it cracked the first time I, I, I tried to fit it. So I got a new o-ring lashed out and uh, that works fine and then the little uh, Delrin end cap uh, attaches there and um, it all fits together quite nicely and uh, it's a very good seal I think it's going to work really well some kind of plastic A drop of oil on and see how it goes. Still in frame, yep. Oh. There we go. It's pretty good. That's going to be fine. That should free up a bit. Okay, so the next part will be that handle. And we're getting close. Um, so, uh, thanks for watching. I hope someone's watching. And, uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Bye bye for now.